Hey, good morning. It's uh, the Opie and Anthony Show. Let me set the scene here. It's a very, very, very busy morning. We got Patrice O'Neill on the couch. We got Bob Kelly on the couch. We got Louis C.K. to my right. We got Basil T's in the corner uh, making omelets for everybody. And we got English Gavin, who's 6'5", 290 pounds, not a hint of fat on his body. He's got the binoculars, and he's checking out uh, the girl exercising naked. And he's uncut. <laughs> he's uncut. Bob Kelly needs to add to that. I'm taking a sauna with him. <laughs> hey, uh, Gavin, how's it going out How's it going out the window this morning? Yeah, we that mic's on, uh, not on. Why would it be? Why would it be? Why would that microphone be on? It needs to be that one? Okay. Gavin, what are you seeing out the window? Uh, I've seen nothing right now. She's still wearing clothes, and unfortunately, she's trying to read a magazine and whatnot, but uh, she's really teasing me. Yeah, she uh, <laughs> she does get naked. <laughs> I want to club over that fence and just, uh... <laughs> She's any, what about the, mag the naked chicks in the magazine? <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, actually, like you might, yeah, she actually has, yeah. Uh, Gavin, we've seen her naked many, many times. Wow. You're not missing much. Is she a white girl? Oh, really? Well, yeah. Yeah, yeah she's Gavin got a, loves white girl. He's going to do I the, do the, the blade girls. jump right over to that. The blade jump. He did a girl over my apartment. My, my girlfriend's best friend, he came over. Romance her in like uh, four hours, and then that night just blasted her on my couch. <laughs> <laughs> the girl fell in love with him. This this white girl from Boston fell in love with this black Englishman, yeah, and he oh dumped God. her. And he's such a Viking. He's just probably a Viking. Oh, was a, me, me, and Don were, your couch me and Don, kind of, me and Don, <laughs> we were holding each other in the bed, like oh my God, like there was a monster attacking her. <laughs> oh <my God. laughs> he, as well. he drank cool. out of his helmet and left. It was a bad day. <laughs> I drank out of her skull. <laughs> <laughs> He what just blasted her. You, you were scared for your life what you were hearing? We were just holding each other like, she's going to be okay, honey. She's like, go out there and help her. I'm not going out there. It's Gavin, he's uncut. <laughs> He'll grab me with that thing and throw me like an elephant. It's, it's, it's big, prehensile. It's, it's big English jam. He looks like a pug's face. <laughs> friends <laughs> <laughs> that was a compliment yes and then we got to get back to jimmy too the instant feedback everybody's pointing I completely out completely forgot uh, especially steven s from bayshore you got to give josh uh from ohio some credit as well and kevin from connecticut also saying the same thing that uh, the tranny the tranny in that situation you described me yeah i completely yeah. forgot i told mm -hmm. the story and I, when it had been happening i've been riding around in this circle and and the train did say for wasting my time because i wouldn't stop that's why uh, she took his glasses why. Oh, and, and, and my shoes. So I completely forgot about that. Oh, it was awful. <laughs> Officer, I need my glasses back. The the gentleman dressed like a woman took them from me, and I can't see, goddammit. <laughs> you must have been pathetic. No, no, that makes you feel really good. Uh, I tried to drive away, but I hit something with a penis. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, every good gentleman has a fault. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and just when you thought back. the show couldn't get any crazier, we got Howie Mandel standing by. He's on the phone here. Howie. Yes. How are you, buddy? Uh, have you reached the guest quota yet? Well. Yeah, I know. Really. I, I think this is <laughs> the. I think this is the most mics we've had on in a very long time. But, that worked. Uh, but we wanted to squeeze you in there, Howie. Thanks. It's uh, it's an honor to be part of this extravaganza. Yeah, it is an extravaganza. We got uh, we got a girl ready to be naked and exercising across the way. We Does got... she know she's going to be on the radio? <laughs> uh, <laughs> she will. Well, you know what, Howie? <laughs> this girl knows that people are looking at her because she has no shades, no blinds. Every yeah, morning, keeps it open. Every morning, it's the same routine. She takes all her clothes off. She jumps on an exercise bike. Uh, which isn't doing any 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 uh, help whatsoever. She got a big ass, yeah. and uh, she's not really into Wait, shaving. She, she, she's, she's naked on a exercise bike every morning, every morning well, without it's, fail. It's not about the exercise if she's sitting on one of those seats pedaling. <laughs> <laughs> you said there's a seat. <laughs> yeah, there's no seat. It's not about losing weight. It's no, just smelling up the seat. And then and then she <laughs> then she goes and she showers. She comes back out naked, hangs out for a while, uh, a little more naked. Yeah. And, you know, no Goes blinds. Yeah, every single light in her apartment is on. She's not trying to hide you know anything. What, you know she what? does have blinds. It's just that they, they're pointed so that if you look, like, you don't think about, when you have blinds, you don't think about the people that are above you looking down through the slats. But you gotta, yeah, yeah. Like, you sort you of... got to alert her. It would be great to alert her live on the air, which is next time she's naked on the bike, you go, send somebody down to buzz the apartment. <laughs> well, we got to right. figure out which apartment it is you know, somehow. No Obi, I, I think that um, Balloon Glove Howie could have talked about this more in depth, 
But deal or no deal, Howie can't do it. No. How <laughs> deal or no deal, Howie. No, this no, is no, dangerous no, territory do, for deal or no deal, Howie. I, I, gotta I, can, do, I can do this. I'm in town doing live, uh, you know, on uh, Saturday and Sunday. I'm at Westbury Music Fair, and I'm at the Bergen County Theater in uh, Inglewood, New Jersey. I'm filthy. On, 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 uh, it's not the deal or no deal. I'm gonna, I'm, hold deal on. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, no, I'm going to back up Howie. He's been on our show ever uh, since the deal or no deal has become huge, and he's he's told us some horrific things. Really? Tonight, tonight yes, he's, on, right tonight he's actually on Monk. His, uh, his uh, Monk episode airs tonight. Right, oh. but that's not filthy. That's me ridding Tony Shalhoub of his, uh, his need to wipe his hands. That's who they hired me. Yeah. <laughs> it is. Hey, Howie, you wouldn't want to be in the studio, by the way. I'm, I'm getting over the flu. Patrice has it. Uh, Jimmy's been sneezing all week. Anthony's had a couple sneezes going on uh, the last few days. Bob just Kelly's just ugly. Bob Kelly's <laughs> ugly. But I, but, I have, but I just bought a bidet. Yeah, but Bob oh, Kelly, Bob Kelly uh, told us about his bidet, and we were bragging about yours <laughs> yesterday, Howie. No, I have. I told you about that toilet, right? Yeah, of course. It's not you only did. a bidet, you don't touch anything. No, you don't touch toilet paper anymore. No, no. Have you ever had a cold? Wow. Yes, I get I get sicker more than any. I get more. So what's your point? Wait a minute, how do you use a bidet like to wipe like oh, everything? No, 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 no. This has this has. A, Does it have like acid in it? Like, what if you have like a really sticky poo? No, this power wash. Power wash? Really? You just power blast wash. it? Set it, on, you set it on power wash and, 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 and then and then blow dry. Those foam strips like a wow. car wash come out and just lather it up. I don't know if I told you last time. I accidentally hit the button that said front wash. And it was like one of those speed bags. It's a thousand dollars that that toilet seat. Uh, way more than that. No, it's not the seat. I got the whole. I got the Neo Rest six hundred. It's like five grand. I got all the. I go. I walk into the into the bathroom at night. I don't even have to touch the light. The 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 seat automatically raises, and there's a beautiful glow. The a light. Comes you know out. who you are, Howie. You the old man from the original <laughs> Creep Show. What? Remember the, the roach guy? The, yeah. The, the, all the roaches? They creep up on you. Yeah, they creep up on you. It's just Bugs. Like, I don't Bugs. touch nothing. You got to touch something, Howie. No, I touch nothing. I go through life touching nothing. And then not only not only that, as soon as you sit down, it's like a warm, It's a, it's a, the seat is heated to a I have desire. that. You have that. I have that. Yeah, well, Bob, Kelly, Bob Kelly's no, got the well, cheap version. Yeah, but he knows well, how he has. First of all, he's got deal or no deal money. I got Caroline's yeah. three show money. Bob but Kelly's you know seat what? you have to heat with matches. Just what I <laughs> save on toilet paper alone. It's it's worth. I don't even use toilet paper Five thousand dollars, so it's like the bidet from France, like the the, the Japan, what they, I think. What the it's different saying, reasons, though. How uh, Bob Bob, a, Bob I, wants comfortable craps because, like me, every time he takes a dump, it's an emergency because <laughs> we both have bad diets and things come violently rocketing out of our asses. <laughs> <laughs> and so no. we need at least to be comfortable <laughs> during the trauma. We give yeah. birth you know every I time mean? we poop. Yeah. How he how he's crazy and has mental problems no, and he can't I touch this, this. I made it a whole. I made it a whole it's kind of for me it's like a hobby now it's right. like i mean i took the i got a flat screen tv i put in right in front that. of it i got and that I put a phone and ted ted bundy's hobby was I, killing <laughs> nurses <laughs> how much does it cost to uh, install that the, the what the, the uh the toilet yeah like the install you know the whole plumber thing but, uh, honestly i think i was exaggerating i think the whole thing is like three grand totally installed yeah poor howie every time he comes on our show he has to talk about his germs and well, his and his uh toilet he's that's all we talk to him the about. toilet he's is fascinating that that, that, howie that's my life yeah Howie, do you find yourself sitting on the toilet longer and longer every day like absolutely I, like i i was like it, 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 i'm getting addicted to the feeling of it cleaning me my life revolves around crapping but since i got this toilet that's that's my schedule, and then I fit everything around it. Hey, can I tell a Howie related story? By the way, yeah, Howie, this is Louis C.K. Remember? Uh, uh, I remember he, you, Louis. You know I'm me, a huge fan. Well, Howie uh, and I, he took me to open for him in a few gigs, and we were in Poughkeepsie at the <laughs> Howling, whatever it is there. Yeah, yeah. Wolf. yeah. yeah so uh, we they gave us the mo the Motel Eight or whatever right. as a dressing room, and I went. Howie didn't, you know, he just ate dinner and stayed, and then we just we left. But I went to the dressing room to. And the Motel 8 people had created this this presidential suite for Howie. Like, they must have gone out and gotten special <laughs> furniture. And there was a gift basket. And there was a note saying uh, the owner of the hotel loves Howie more than anything and would love a picture with him. And we did this room just for you. And I would look at this stuff, and I didn't. I just was like, screw him. And I didn't tell Howie. <laughs> you never told him. <laughs> never told him. I'm hearing never <laughs> told him. Like, I just, I was in a bad mood. I was bitter for some reason. Oh, Probably because so I was cool. opening for Howie Mandel at the Howling Wolf in Poughkeepsie. <laughs> <laughs> the Laughing Wolf. Yeah, and I just didn't tell well, you anybody. Weren't bitter, you weren't bitter enough to trash the room <laughs> no, exactly. and write back, fuck you. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. oh, excuse me.
That's all right. Oops. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oops. <laughs> ah, well. Hey, are, you better, are you any better with Howie? I, I don't know. Am I talking on? Is this, uh, no, this is regular radio. Are you any better with the germs now, or is it the same thing? Why, like, within three months, how did I get cured? No. Well, no, but any better. Is there any <laughs> no. progress at all? No. No. <laughs> no. What, what, what did you hear I was doing that would enhance the progress? Yeah. Nothing. I just figured that we've talked about it. Now we're talking about it again, so maybe you had Would you be more bit. uncomfortable if a black man or a white man licked your face? <laughs> <laughs> Let, let's just get let's just get down to the nitty gritty. Black man, there'll be a home invasion happening. <laughs> oh, yeah, well, no, but Howie, do you go? Do you get counseling for it or anything? Or is this yeah, something I'm you... constantly. My okay. my therapist lives in a beautiful gated community. Yeah, it's a uh, yes. I'm I'm in cognitive therapy now. And you're right. married, right? Cognitive. Yes. You've got kids, right? So here's the question: Three kids. I have. I sit. I will sit. Some therapy sessions are just sitting there, shaking heads. So <laughs> you're you're married, Howie. Now here's the question: um, Raw, Diggy, you know, raw, raw. What? I mean, I'm saying, do you, you know, do you wear a condom? Yeah, with your right. Wife? And you go raw. No, yeah, I don't shake her hand. Yes, I go raw. Yeah. All right, I'm just checking. That yeah. does that doesn't bug you? No, no, that. Do you do it like uh like I, uh, like a hot seed through a sheet or something? <laughs> yeah. Are you like a surgeon <laughs> when you have sex? And then on Halloween, my kids go out as one-eyed ghosts. <laughs> <laughs> one, one bloody-eyed ghost. <laughs> <laughs> one pussy bloody eye. <laughs> All right. The one eyed cyclop ghost has pink eye. Yeah, oh, man. Uh, wow. Oh. Trying to get most of this on the radio. Oh, by the way. funny. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> that is really so <laughs> indirect. It takes oh, you so many, man. so much work to get to the bad <laughs> yeah to get there. there. Hey, how we yeah. still, uh, still love and deal and no deal. And yeah. like I said, every time you come on our show, it's because of you. You, I mean, it's such a dumb concept, but I watch. All, I watch oh, every I, time I go. I, I can't not watch it. I, I have know, to watch it. I watch because of Howie. Because somehow he just makes it work. I don't get it. Dick, we're just, in the middle of a million dollar mission now. We're we're gonna and and hopefully somebody's gonna walk out of there with a million. That's that's the mission. Is every, every time somebody doesn't win the million, we're adding another. Another case with a million, and wow. we're going to do it up to fifty-seven cases. Jesus! Wow! Howie, that show made me cry once. Why? Huh? It really did make me cry. Teary eyes? Yes. Well, well, it was a marine. Win? It was a, <laughs> like a marine who came over from. He just came back from the war, and he had like two days here, right, in New York, and he couldn't. They mentioned he couldn't see his family. There wasn't time to go to California to see them. So he's in his moment where he's going to see his his kids come out and right. his wife. He, he didn't know they weren't coming. Oh, yeah. So everybody's crying. Right. And then that moment that he hits that every idiot on that show hits <laughs> where you've got... <laughs> or it's time to walk away. You've got 150. <laughs> it's always like at 125,000. Yeah, right. That basically, if you're not if you're in your living room, you're like, you. there's $125,000 in front of you and you're saying no, you piece, you just garbage human <laughs> well, being. But at that but point, he <laughs> hit that point, and he said to his kids, like everyone was screaming, hey, you know, no deal. And he said to his little girls, he said, you see what's happening here, one hundred twenty-five thousand dollars, and there's a, like whatever, there's a one in four chance that mm. the odds are really good that I'll get more. And I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna uh, gamble with your futures that way. And he took, he said, uh, no I just started balling. Uh, <laughs> really? No, the thing that's great about that show though is that everyone screens no deal. Everyone wants yeah. it, but then the second the person takes the deal, the is thank yeah. God, thank you, Jesus, <laughs> thank God, thank God. We're all crazy. Thank God, you're not crazy. Can I? They can I? See a disaster. One that bothered me <laughs> along the same lines was there was a. We had a woman on whose husband was in Iraq, and and we went live to Fallujah. Oh. The guy's in the battlefield, and we're I mean we're looking at him with uh, night vision goggles. Wow! And you know he's he's just a young kid. He's out there. He's in the worst part of w wherever the, the the war was going on, and they got, she had gotten to a point where there wasn't much left on the board. I don't remember, and the offer was six figures, which would have changed the life. And he said, and she goes, "Honey, what should I do?" And from Fallujah, with a you know we have a horrible signal. He says, take the money, honey. Just take the money. And then the satellite went out. We lost, we, we lost the guy. Oh. And she goes, and she goes, you know what? He doesn't know. No deal. 
Oh. Went home with a buck. Oh my god. Oh. Yep. Oh. oh, he must. See, have what a bitch. What yeah. I do. He must have beat her savagely. Oh. What I, when he came. <laughs> what I do at home when it gets to the, the you know the figure Louis was talking about mm -hmm. 100, 125,000, mm -hmm. and they don't take that money. Right. You want them to take that money. As soon yeah. as they say no deal, now you go the other way and you're like, yeah. man, I hope he gets a dollar. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I gotta watch now and watch him lose right. it all. Well, the oh, Marine totally. that took the money. The Marine that took now, the money. Do you what remember was the that next case? Do you remember that show, Howie? That Marine. Mm -hmm. I don't remember the. Uh, Marine. Why so Louis, what so was after that? Do you remember? I don't remember, oh. but it was a. I don't remember that part of it where then they break his heart that he could have had more. Look at Anthony. <laughs> yeah. Look at Anthony yeah, like this sissy talk. No, I, I watched the show. I'm, I'm betting until I lose. I, well, He's like all this betting. No, nah, I probably would be totally different on those game shows. Right. Howie, yeah. do you, Howie, do you uh -huh. remember? Do you remember the Chinese guy who had come here with seventy five dollars? I love that. No, that's seven hundred and fifty dollars. Yeah, he that's... came here with seven hundred and fifty dollars. Yeah, and, the Korean guy. And he was like immigrant, and so now this is his family playing the show. And well, the, he the... said he said he said that uh, you know his family came from Korea with a one bag with seven hundred fifty dollars mm -hmm. in it mm -hmm. and two kids. So chase the American dream, and these two Korean, this couple put their kids through school and college, and now the kid was uh, just getting married, and he's on a game show. He says, I made it. It all started from $750, and I made it. And he starts playing the game, and then as luck would have it, all that's left on the board is $750,000, yep. $75,000, and seven hundred and fifty dollars. It's just weird. And, and then and then and then the offer comes in. The offer is like three hundred and something thousand dollars, and he says deal. He takes the deal. But it was amazing that they had. He started with seven fifty. His father seven fifty seventy five thousand and seven hundred fifty thousand. The numbers look great. I said, let's see if you had made a good deal. Uh, if you made a good deal, had you said no deal to the three hundred and fifty, what would your next choice be? As he opens the next case. Seven hundred and fifty thousand dollars is revealed. So he he got out at, at the perfect time. Yep. And then we open up his case to see what he had sold. He sold his case for three hundred fifty thousand dollars. We open his case, and his case that he started the game with was a case holding seven hundred and fifty dollars. Yeah, the same amount. Just of like he came over. But there was a moment of heroin. But there was a moment in that show when they had Kimchi. revealed all that, where the old man was crying. Like the old man was saying, the old man breaks in the crying. He's sitting down there. The old man breaks crying. I take the case with the seven hundred and fifty dollars, and I walk it down in the audience, and I put it back in his lap. That's right. But here's the thing. And Everyone, say the he was crying. Thing I think I've ever saw. I which said, was that, what? ladies and gentlemen, is the circle. Of life. Oh, Jesus I saw, yeah, but here's the thing. Oh, I had a total I saw a woman I had, on uh, Price is Right break her back doing Plinko. I, <laughs> and I, I had, cried. I had a totally different view of that show, though, because yeah. that guy was crying. He didn't say a word the whole time because he doesn't speak English. Right. He's crying at the end, and everyone's up standing and applauding. And I thought, and it was supposed to be because how great this is, but I thought the guy was crying because look what materialistic <laughs> douchebags my family have turned into. <laughs> yeah, he's all alert. upset. My Why whole struggle, my, yes, uh, he was like, my whole life struggle was a waste because these people have no values and they just chased uh, me on a game me? show when I came Louis, here. Louis, Louis, do came you care here. about any black people, any black stories on there? That's, What's that? You know, some kid from Compton who <laughs> lost his Air Force One. No, I don't any, care. Any black cry co stories? Black no, came in no. And stole all the cases. And ran off the <laughs> That's what. <laughs> hey, how did Black Kid stole that card with the money on it, thinking it was worth something? <laughs> like he stole the case. Thinking Chinese he could actually, immigrants, I cried for what? Spend what? That money. Hey, Howie, the other thing I like, and, and you guys don't do it all the time, but uh, you show the case going into commercial, so the people at so the people at home know exactly what's in the case before the guy makes his decision. You like that? I didn't like that as much. I, I kind of like that. Oh. Okay. Yeah. I'll 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 give them the note. That doesn't matter, I guess. Yeah, but, uh, Opie and, liked this. But what I I guess what I like about the show, you're always throwing a, a different twist into it. And we th are. And the theme shows and all that. It's, it's does the bank the banker doesn't he just say hey uh, how he suck my blank or yeah. something? Doesn't he just say <laughs> yeah? Because yeah, right? Or, yes. Yeah, yes. it's all set up uh, way in advance. So, no, no, yeah. no, 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 no. He's really he really I'll has the offers. It. It's on a, It's he. he but it doesn't take him that long to just say the money. He just says hey how he. Uh, he either tries to throw me or he says. Uh, right. Horribly disgusting stuff about <laughs> right. the contestant, and, and I <laughs> tell that great. fat, tell that fat, smelly pig <laughs> <laughs> that I'll give her fifty thousand dollars for a case with. You know, maggots in it. Yeah, yeah, not too far off. <laughs> yeah, because it gets boring for you guys. Oh, that's keep it funny. Day, I don't know if you watched the other day, but he actually, it was some woman had as a lucky charm her little girl's piggy bank. Mm -hmm. And he took it, and I thought he was going to take it. He actually smashed it. 
Oh my God! He, <laughs> he did. He and I thought it? he was faking it. He actually smashed this little girl's piggy bank, and this woman's game just went down the toilet. I mean, he is <laughs> oh, evil. That's great. That's yeah. Scary. All right, Howie. So what do we got? Uh, you're going to be on region. You're hosting today, right? Yeah, I'm there now, so I got to go run. Oh. And I'm, I'm hosting, and I'll be at the uh, Bergen uh, Theater on uh, Sunday and on Saturday at Westbury Music Fair. Where the hell's Regis that he couldn't be there? I, I have no idea. It's very angry. I'll, I'll find out. I'll find out. Hey, good to talk to you guys again. Louie, great to talk to you. Yeah, Howie, take it easy. Okay. All right, Howie Mandela, everyone. Got to take a quick break. We're going to get into the dark.